Hi everyone, um, welcome to the uh, Iron Dreams Ironman Geelong 70.3 introductory introduction to the training plan. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm not sure how many if anyone's on at the moment, but we've got <laughs> heaps on. What's yeah. that? We've got heaps. On. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll get started. I'll firstly just um, as a waiting for people to join, I'll introduce myself. Uh, so you would have seen probably from the profile that um, Stuart Parsley. I've been doing. Uh, I've been. Competing in triathlons for most of my life now since I was 16. Uh, in fact, and then I did July Man Geelong in 2014. And part of the reason why I'm really excited about uh, doing this program for you is that Ironman Geelong 70.3 or 70.3 Geelong was my first half Ironman. So it's my introduction to, to Ironman racing. Um, I had a great day that day. I loved it. It was pretty horrendous conditions, but I had a great, great fun and a great time. And since then, I've gone on to do another half dozen um, half Ironmans, including the 2016 uh, World Championships, uh, half Ironman World Championships, which Mitch actually did as well as a professional. I was in the age group. Uh, and then also Ironman Melbourne, I did that. And then a couple of years later, I did uh, actually got co coaching, um, I4 coaching, joined them and attempted uh, Cairns Ironman. And I was lucky to fulfill <laughs> Uh, one of my lifetime dreams to um, get to Kona that year. So I went to Kona, loved it. Uh, and then magically I qualified again the next year. <laughs> so I've actually just done it, just come back from Kona. So uh, yeah, love Ironman, um, or try to find an Ironman, especially half Ironman, half Ironman. Uh, throughout that, I also really love the coaching aspect and the technical sides of the sport. Uh, so this year I... I uh, did coaching courses, I did the Triathlon Australia Level 1 Development course and also the Ironman University um, Certified Training course as well, which sort of got me to this, into this position I am now. So um, at this stage I'll just go to introduce Mitch, do you yeah. want to introduce yourself? Uh, thanks Stu, okay. yeah, my name is Mitchell Kibbe, I uh, grew up in Melbourne playing Aussie Rules football and cricket. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was late to triathlon, but um, possibly I, I wasn't a junior when I started. Um, I finished high school and moved up to Queensland and was actually living on the Noosa Tri course and one morning I was out there eating my wheat bix and I had uh, thousands of people running past my doorstep and uh, that was actually the first time I'd seen triathlon at the amateur level aside from on TV um, and I wandered down to the finish shoot and I was standing on the Sheridan Bridge there and just saw <laughs> Um, just this huge atmosphere. I picked up a triathlon magazine and uh, I was hooked from then on. So um, when I returned home that year, um, I went to university and from the time that I was at university, I went from racing uh, in the age group ranks. Uh, I did a world championship campaign, Olympic distance, Gold Coast 2009. And then by the time I'd finished university, I'd qualified for my professional licence after I won the Australian Amateur Championships up in Moolaba. And from then on, uh, I've raced professionally since 2011. Um, so, You've done a few, quite a lot of halves, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I initially started out racing the ITU short course stuff. Um, and then in 2014, I returned home from racing some French Grand Prix overseas. And... Mm -hmm. Um, Challenge Shepparton was my first, uh, my first half distance, um, and then that summer I moved into a number of Ironman seventy point three races, um, and last year competed in my first Ironman, um, that was over in in France in Nice, and absolutely loved it. So, yeah. hopefully, uh, the next few years has a bunch more Ironman and Ironman seventy point three races in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're. Coach, you're dire director of I4 Coaching? Yep, so uh, probably the same time that I started racing as a professional, um, I started coaching. It initially started out with just a run group. We'd have um, half a dozen of my mates that I used to play footy with would turn up um, and I'd just take them through a run session um, and they kept turning up, so I started to think that I was doing something good. Um, <laughs> And then in the in the years that followed, I went on and did my um, accreditation with Triathlon Australia. Um, I'm a level two performance coach, um, and I've also done my Ironman University uh, certification. So, uh, am I right that you're still the only professional triathlete and a 
forwards coach in I, Australia? I think so. I think yeah. um, maybe this this coming year there might be another couple of pro athletes that have done yeah, a okay. performance right, course. Okay. But um, I think I was the the first one to hold a professional license yeah, and a okay. performance coaching yeah. certification. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's certainly great to have you here with us. Yeah, today, and um, yeah, I think that probably just leans on yeah. uh, how significant triathlon is in my life. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. it's my work, it's my it's my play, um, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Mitch is my coach at the moment, and uh, he coached me to the qualification in for Kona this year, and and uh, and took me to the race this year. Yep. issue as well which is great but yeah he's a great uh, it's great to have you he's a friend mentor coach everything so <laughs> thanks for coming yeah pleasure <laughs> to you thank you um all right so i'll just move on to the some to the program uh, just some general comments i wanted to make is that um now you're probably not aware if you're a beginner that the program is relatively low low volume um and that's and but it doesn't mean it's low intensity though there's certainly a number of high intensity uh, sessions during each of the weeks but it's it's on the lowish volume and that's that's for a reason because when you're putting together a general plan you've got to be very careful of um, making sure you don't get the athlete injured so uh, and one of the ways to do that is is a, is a lower volume certainly you can increase the volume but I would probably say that when you're starting to increase your volumes in a plan that's probably the time um, you, you want to coach I think because it's really hard to hard to manage your recovery um, your recovery weeks, your recovery sessions, all that sort of stuff. You've got to really go over your numbers in, in a lot of detail. Um, you can certainly do that in low volume plans as well, and I'd probably recommend that. Yeah, um, get a coach if you can. Um, but certainly when you're doing a general one, I think the lower side is the best is the best approach to take in that in that case. Yeah, and I'd say um, just one one thing when you're starting out on a program for the first time. Um, it takes quite a bit of patience and mm. you need to be able to uh, give back some of the, the good energy that you've got on some days and save it for another day. Um, a training program is designed to uh, build you up over a period of time and I think uh, before anyone joins on a structured training program, they tend to enjoy doing the hero days, um, mm. a really long yeah. run or a long yeah. ride that... Yeah looks great on uh, on Strava afterwards, um, but I, I think it's important to f uh, give up some of those um, ego boosting sessions. Mm. Um, just stick with the plan and it, it, will, it will progressively build up on you day after day. So always look forward to the next day on the program rather than try and go to 101% yeah. yeah. on that day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but having said it's a low volume, it's certainly, more than enough volume to get you, you know, through the race in a good condition. In fact, it's probably, uh, when I did my first half Ironman, I probably did almost, le I think it was less hours than I did um, for the, that I've got planned here. Yeah. And even when I was doing Ironman, and Mitch would probably be a bit shocked by, <laughs> when I did my first Ironman, I think I averaged, I looked back recently and I did, it was doing 12 hours a week, I think, yeah. to train for that. It's all, all the LS, that was the, the most I ever did. So. Yeah. You'll be doing those sort of um, a bit less than that because it's not a, an Ironman, but um, it's more than enough to, to get you through, you know, feeling pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll just start off also, before I go into more detail of the actual plan, I will say that um, there's a few things I think it would be really good to, to get done for yourself if you can. And one of those is a, um, a strength and mobility type assessment yeah. by, uh, I mean, I usually go to physios, uh, but osteos are also good as well. Yeah. Um, there's a few people we actually, we use that we can recommend. One is yeah. Dynamic Stability. Yeah, we're linked in with Dynamic Stability. Um, they've got clinics in Richmond and Rip and Lee. Um, Darren Stajanovic, he's, yeah. he's the, um, the director of, of Dynamic and he's, he's worked with um, some Victorian Bush Rangers cricketers, some of the AFL teams. Um, and I think probably more significantly, he's seen a lot of the I4 mm. coaching team over the last yeah. couple of years, which is yeah. typically um, adults who are coming back to the sport after a period of inactivity. Yeah. Um, and that's often, that's at the red flag time for, for an athlete when they have um, just starting a sport again. Yeah. Um, the body's been asleep, certain muscles haven't been used for a period of time. Mm. And mm. Uh, we need to make sure we address that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... I, I'm actually sponsored by guys back in Motion Brunswick and they're also really good and they're in the north region. So yeah. if you're in that area, that might suit you a bit more. But obviously there's physios and osteos in you know, lots of places that you know, they're good. So try and seek one of those out and get... There's a whole 
parameter of things that I actually did recently before Kona where you go through, you know, you're sort of seeing how far you can stretch, how far you can jump and, and seeing different imbalance, you know, whether there's imbalances, but, you know, on either side of the body and all those yeah. sort of things. And the thing about that is, yeah, it's just preventing injuries is key and also can serve as a launching pad to increase your strength for, um, as you go forward, and particularly if you're going to go further after this, after the Geelong as well. It's yeah. really important to, to really nail that. Um, yeah. You want to make sure you get that. Because there's that nothing right. worse than being injured. Oh, yeah. You miss a day on your program because you're <laughs> yeah. injured and you that's right. never forgive yeah, yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also other things that I would recommend that are really nice to have. They're not essential, but boy, they'll make things a lot easier if you can get to do them. And especially if you're planning on doing uh, races after this. It, the first one is a, a swim assessment, a video analysis. Mitch actually and I for do those and they're fantastic and I won't I can bring it up if anyone asks the question. I can bring up my my last one that I did. Yeah. Which shows some uh some decent flaws, but we're working on those. Yeah. Then we'll um, bring up yeah, the next one. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um so you can um I'll put them on the um I'll post how you can get to do the I4 one where you can yeah. uh, apply for that if you want to do that. I think that's really important, particularly for swimming and a lot of these assessments that I'll that I'll mention it's you know, if you've got bad habits, if you just sort of build on those bad habits, you're not sort of improving. Yeah, so yeah. you want to try and uh, get rid of those before if you can. Uh, certainly, the program uh, will get you to a good stage, but um, if you want to improve your, your technique, etc., it's it's great to um, to do to do that. Uh, likewise, with the running assessment, with Mitch also does, and I for also do. Uh, I think running is almost probably more important than a swimming i would say because with running if your technique's not right well firstly it will be you might get injured you can get injured mm, um, yeah. so it's really important to um, and running is just so much easier and so much nicer and the race is just so much better if your running technique is, is good yeah and uh, you're not fearing it's that a, last it's a leg. pleasure yeah yep. uh yeah if you're not fearing the last leg it's yeah it's glory days because yeah, <laughs> everyone else will be <laughs> yeah, yeah. everyone else will be yeah so I'd really recommend I've done that um, you know I'm plugging I4 because they do a great job um, with those assessments and they have, I can absolutely say hand on heart they've made a massive difference in mine especially I was a reasonably decent runner yeah. but I think it went to another level with that um, yeah. you don't have to be a bad runner to get um, something out of those courses um, yeah. so I definitely recommend those I guess the just the thing on technique is there's always something to be thinking about. Um, often we just, we've just looked at someone run on TV or running along the beach and we think, oh, we can just repeat that. Um, but mm. even the best runners have things constantly going through their head, um, technique cues, and mm. th they're very simple, um, but they're not natural um, to, to people unless you've been a, a career runner. So just being exposed to some of those cues is a really good way to, to get you started and improve yeah. your efficiency on your running. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So uh, oh, also I was just going to mention it as well, um, bike fit and bike choice as well. Uh, you don't have to have a tri bike to do, and many of you possibly won't have a tri bike. You'll have a, a road bike. What I would say though is there's no problem doing a, a half Ironman, especially when you're a beginner on a, on a road bike. Um, but you can set it up with aero bars and those sort of things that will make it easier. Well, easier in one way. They'll actually make you more aerodynamic, but it's really, really important when you make those sort of changes, particularly aero bars, um, and overall that you're fitted properly to, the, to your bike. Yeah. So you might be, you might have even had a bike fit um, on your road bike, feeling good. But as soon as you change something like your aero, your positioning aero, or put aero bars on, everything changes and things have to be changed and you have to be set up properly yeah. for that. Um, you may have, indeed, you might have a, a proper tri bike um, and it doesn't cost much to actually get one of those. You can actually get them pretty cheap. I did. I actually got a $1,500 uh, secondhand P Cervelo P2 that I, yeah. I qualified for Kona on that. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money, and I probably advise you don't actually, because um, your bang for buck's probably not there compared to just a, a standard TT bike. Um, and certainly email me for advice on that. Um, but what I'll be hopefully having in the next um, coming before Christmas or maybe just after is I'll have a session with uh, Mitch Anderson who does uh, bike fitting now. And yeah. he's got a place down where he... And he'll hopefully give us some tips around what you might be able to do yourself or you can, in fact, go in and get something done with him. Yeah, fantastic. So we'll see how, yeah. how we go with that. Yeah. All right, so quickly back to the plan. Um, what I'll say is... Um, I've said, I've told you about it. It's relatively low intensity. 
Um, also, with the plan, it basically follows a general uh, sort of not a rule. There's no hard and fast rules. There's no rocket science in triathlon coaching, but where you'll sort of increase your intensity for a couple of weeks and then you'll have a recovery week and then you'll increase it again slowly the next couple of weeks and then a recovery week. It's generally two weeks on and then one week on. One week is the recovery week. Um, it starts off you know, relatively low, and it, but each, each week, apart from those recovery weeks, it's increasing your distances and mainly the distances in the longer uh, runs and the rides. They're the ones that are mainly contributing to that increase in uh, time during the, during the week. Um, what I'll say about recovery is it, that recovery doesn't mean, well, for me, recovery is less volume, but it doesn't mean necessarily less intensity. So you'll still have hard sessions uh, or relatively hard sessions during the week, during a recovery week, but your volume won't overall will be a bit less. Um, the other thing is, um, what I'll say about during each of the weeks as well, uh, generally there's three swims, three runs and three rides. It may change a bit, but that's sort of the average. Um, and there's also, crucially, there's usually a rest day during that week as well. Now, I know Mitch is a big one on, on rest and recovery. It, it, it's just so important. When it says rest, please do that. Please rest. Yeah. <laughs> don't go and, and go to the gym and do a workout. Don't swim, don't run, don't ride. Maybe have a massage, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. But not one that hurts you, I would say. Um, but just, I think yeah. it's, it's important to use your rest day to take pressure off your whole life. Yeah, um, that's, yeah that's true. The yeah. reality is triathlons, it's a very busy sport. And when you're looking at adults who are training, they're working as well. Often they have families. Um, they might even have two jobs to go to or be studying something at the same time. So there's always a lot to do. And we find ourselves constantly looking at the clock. Um, and the rest day is a really good chance just to not have the perceived pressure of the clock on your day. Yeah. Um, and you might feel good in week one or week two when the rest day comes yeah. around. But yeah. by the time you get to week yeah. eight or week nine, yeah. you'll yeah. be uh, counting down three days <laughs> out. So. I know you've said to me a couple of times, you know, rest day means rest. It doesn't mean go out shopping all day or yeah, you, you know, that sort of stuff that will actually tie you out. I yeah. That's important too. You're right. Have a proper rest day, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, just back onto those, those, so for swimming the three days, generally it's, you would have seen on the plan, it's generally a, a technique type swim, although it doesn't, the plan to be honest, doesn't go into a whole lot of technique because technique is so individual. Um, so I haven't done that and I would, if you, if you do think you have problems with technique, etc., as I said, I'd recommend going have some, some, some proper work done on that. But generally there's that sort of technique and then there's a, um, a speed type session in the pool and there's an endurance uh, session and it's very similar for the others. So for bike has a speed session, a strength session and a longer ride on the weekend. And I'll just quickly say for the strength session, it, it usually involves low cadence work that, that I do. But for beginners, you have to be very careful on uh, of your, when you're doing low stuff, I don't want you doing it in too high intensity. It's gotta be pretty you know moderate, to hard not really really hard i don't want you hurting your knees i don't want you getting injured strength is something particularly in triathlon and on the bike and run as well you have to build up gradually you don't want to get into it and hurt yourself so yeah. please do not do that if you have any queries around that if you have any pain whatsoever when you're doing those or about how hard you should do it please please ask me and get some advice on that that is really important yeah um, i think i think one thing on that is you can you look to separate um, strength on the musculoskeletal system, so your legs, versus your cardiovascular system, your heart rate. If you're doing some hill repeats or something, um, either on the bike or the run, um, based on the prescription, you should be able to control your cardiovascular system mm -hmm. um, and then just load up the strength on the legs. And I guess that's the same for a long ride and a long run. We're not looking to sustain a top end mm. heart rate or breathing rate during those sessions. Yeah. They should be comfortable. We're just looking to load up the body and put some condition into the body. Because yeah. on race day, we yeah. might be out there for yeah. greater than five or six hours. So um, just to be able to absorb that impact from the ground over and over, yeah. um, I think that's really important. Yeah, so that's a, protect, really, yeah. protect the heart as yeah. often as you can yeah. while you're out there training. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's particularly, you know, so as you said, for the run, I've specifically said in the run, I want you running slower than what you think your race pace might be. And that's um, for a, mainly because what's well, cut for a few reasons. Um, I do want you uh, being 
you know, recovered. I don't want you hurting yourself. So you know, going on a really long run, really hard, just wrecks you for the next week. And that's going to hurt all your really quality sessions, like your, your speed sessions, etc. If you do yeah. that sort of thing, you do not have to run your long runs really hard. Yeah. Later on in the program where it gets a bit more race specific, uh, there will be some points during that long run where I'll get you to do some intervals during it, but it's really just to get you you're used to running that that hard when you're a bit fatigued. So that really is important that you don't run that really hard. Please do not do that. Yeah. I know it'll be a bit hard to judge because you may not know what your race pace is yet. Yeah. But try and when you're running that running, think you know, do I think I can run this fast when I'm when I'm in the race? If it's yes, then slow down. I want you to do it slower than that. I don't want you hurting yourself. Yeah. But Having said that, running slow is actually can be pretty hard as well. Running slower because you've got to really keep your technique. It's actually almost harder to keep your technique good when you're running slower because you can start to sort of, you know, daze off a bit. Switch, switch <laughs> yeah. things off. So yeah. that is important. I want you running, you know, really keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Same for riding as well. Uh, I really, please just go and do the long rides just with, in a bunch ride with your friends and just enjoy those rides. It's just getting conditioning in your legs especially initially later on there is some specific intervals that'll get you doing that will get you used to that race pace but at the moment i want you ideally you just go off and, and what i do what rich tells me to do just go riding with your friends yeah, and have a good time um, i want you to be able to that sort of pace where you can actually talk properly and that yeah. sort of stuff because particularly as a beginner it's different if you're a you know advanced um you know athlete um, i just want you getting the conditioning in and not um, it's certainly all right if you want to you know get on a pack for a few minutes or you know, 10 minutes and go a bit hard. That's that's fine. It's not going to you know hurt you too much if you do that. But yeah, if you do go really hard, for example, on a long ride, the problem with that is it's gonna, you're going to be really fatigued the next day when you do your long run. And I don't want you doing that because then you might get injured. So just bear all those sort of things in mind. Yeah. And a heart rate monitor too is a really great training sure, yeah. tool. If yeah. you've got a heart yeah. rate monitor... Um, where every every time you're out there running and riding, you don't have to look at it. Um, but ideally, heart rate monitor, you should uh, you can play a little game with yourself over the next twelve weeks and have a think about how closely you can guess what the number says when you haven't been looking at it. Yeah. Um, and that's a really good indicator yeah. that you're starting to get a bit of intuition with your own body. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, for for my aerobic runs, it's probably 30 to 40 beats lower than what I would run during a race. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's that's quite significant. So a minute, yeah. a minute 15 slower than right, what yeah. my race pace would be yeah. when yeah, I'm so just out there running. Yeah, so that's a professional triathlete. That's what he does. So don't go doing race pace long runs. It's yeah. just, just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's not what's, what's done. All right, so I might... Um, is there anything else you want to say before we get into some questions? Uh, no, 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 good for now. All right, I'll get on to some of the questions now. First one is from Peter, and th this is an interesting one. Um, I'm over, and this could, where the place where Geelong is on the on the program, uh, on the you know the yearly program, it's you know it's coming just after Christmas, isn't it? There's a yeah. a lot of people actually taking breaks. Yeah, so. it will definitely come yeah. around quick when yeah. you get the other side of the new year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, but and Peter's question is, I'm overseas for three weeks during Christmas. Running will be okay, but swimming possibly, uh, possibly swimming is okay, but riding may not be possible unless I borrow a bike. Any recommendations? Um, I've got a couple, but I'll just quickly yeah. quickly do. Um, well, I went overseas, and this is just my experience. Um, three weeks, or well, firstly, saying three weeks is actually a long time to have off the bike. Yeah, I think uh, weeks probably you probably I mean, you have said to me, look, don't don't worry about riding if you can't ride. For a week, that's fine. We'll yeah. just concentrate on the other things, and you'll get it back up to speed pretty quickly. I think if you're off the bike for three weeks, you come back pretty deconditioned. Yeah, 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 I'd agree. Yeah. yeah. So what I have done in the past is I've actually it's a bit crazy, but maybe not a bit anal about these things. But in some instances, I've actually taken my own bike with me. I packed it up like I would going to going to Kona, um, and even maybe even seem a bit more weird. I've taken a trainer with me as well, <laughs> so yeah. I've actually set it up in a hotel room. And, and done the rides that way because the roads weren't, at, at, weren't that good outside. That may be a bit of a hassle, I suppose. Um, but I find that most places I've gone away, there's always some place you can do spin, spin classes, yeah. stuff like that. So 
Um, I'd recommend yeah, doing even that. Even if it was just once a week. Exactly. Yeah. Once a week would probably be enough just to keep that up. Yeah. yeah. Or potentially, better yeah. yet, get on a city bike. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Bike yeah. So I've been away overseas where, and some if it's Europe, then I think you're you're set because there there's so right. many yeah. bikes all over the place. Um, there. So yeah, even if you can just do an hour, you know, even once or twice, three times a week with the family or whatever, that will keep the conditioning there. Yeah. Um, any other. Well, I guess yeah. If you if you simply can't get on the bike, well, then that's you don't have an option. Your only option is not to worry about it, um, and just keep up the running as best you can. Uh, swim if you get the chance, um, but otherwise probably um, see if you can work in um, maybe n- not necessarily a heavier bike week, but put a little bit of yeah. focus on the bike or yeah. give yourself a chance to feel the pedals again when you get back. Um, maybe it's. Uh, four bike sessions, two swims um, the following week. Mm. Um, and yeah, so cycling is so much about just getting the rhythm. And I yeah. think that's what you can typically yeah. lose a little bit when yeah. you're away for three yeah. weeks. Yeah. Um, and potentially keep it up if you just get on a city bike. Yeah, or, or yeah, whatever. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not the end of it, but um, depends how seriously you want to take it as well. If, you, sure. if Geelong is... An A race for the summer. There's a lot of time that goes into it, so yeah, potentially you would want to pack your bike up and take yeah. it with you. Yeah. Um. But if you're just doing it for um more the social or um just to have, uh, s- solid fun. solid race and <laughs> yeah. yeah, just yeah. test yourself. Well, yeah, make it even harder. Yeah. 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 All right. So hopefully that's yeah. Uh, email me if you've got any further questions around that. Uh, the next one is another really good one. Um, it's, if you miss a schedule workout, what approach do you recommend? Miss it or schedule for another time? Yeah, um, one of the golden rules that was first told to me when I started, um, my, my first coach was Andy Sleeman, who coached at Tribal Training uh, based here in Melbourne. And his golden rule was, if you miss a session, it's gone. And yeah, okay. forget about it. So regardless of what's on the next day, um, just move forward. You're, you're into the next one and um, yeah, on, on you go. I think sometimes oh, I'd say leave it up to your coach to decide whether or not you um, can shuffle it, but otherwise then you start to take ownership of yeah. your, your program yeah. and then everything becomes difficult and then yeah. you start looking yeah. at it and going, oh, well, I've changed this one, so let's swap this around and that around and then all of a sudden... The program looks different, and yeah. then you'll put three things on one day, and it all looks yeah. too much, yeah. and then and everything falls apart. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it depends on why you miss it. I suppose if you just because you have to go into state on business or something like that, that's different to if you're injured. And yeah, you miss it. Yeah, and that's I think all things are off if you're injured and you missed it. Then you need to. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a little bit Being like wrong. picking at a little bit of thread. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you just think you yeah. pick at the yeah. little bit, yeah. and then you need to pick at it a bit more, and then all of a sudden the program <laughs> yeah, unravels. Right. So, yeah. um, just uh, just leave it. I yeah. think that's yeah. the best advice. Um, yeah, I guess in, in going, consistency is key. So if you're not, um, yeah, that's what another one of your adages, and I'll t- certainly say definitely, um, for, you know, for me as well. Um, Missing one session doesn't mean you lose all of that consistency. Consistency. If you've been consistent and you and you keep that up, the, one session is not going to matter. Yeah, pretty much. You won't even notice it probably. There's some really good research around um, achieving eighty percent of uh, a program. Eighty percent is seven times more likely to achieve right. your your goal. Yeah. Wow. Um. So yeah, if if you're missing one or it's sometimes even two out of ten, um. Be okay with that, but just, yeah, I, I think when it starts to threaten a big chunk of the week because you're either tired or you've bitten off too much um, in some other training sessions that weren't designed to hurt you as much, um, yeah. that's when that 80% target yeah. can be under threat. Yeah, all right. I've got a couple of questions that are around handling, you know, when you're in a race, handling packs, um, and also one about having a pee um, during races. I might leave those because we might do something later on closer to the race. I think they're more specific to, yeah. to racing. Um, and there's another one about, this is an interesting one, what strategies do you use to combat race boredom? And that's boredom on the, on the long rides, essentially, I guess is what um, Peter is tra- asking. Training rides. Yeah, training rides. Train. Oh, well, I've never been bored during a race. I think if you're, yeah. if you're bored during the race, then you're yeah. probably not doing the right <laughs> sport. Yeah. 
Um, but I've certainly have had boredom on the on the bike. Um, yeah. And particularly when I was training for my first Ironman, I think I did all my long rides, so six hour rides by myself. Yeah. And that did my head in. I was like a, a, sh- a you know, blubbering wreck at the end of that program. Yeah. So since then, I've never done that. And the way I combat it is I've always had good mates, uh, people to ride with. And I think that's probably the number one way to do it is yeah. to ride with someone else so you can talk. As I said, you don't need to be... Um, hammering it i don't want you hammering it on those long rides so you can talk yeah so have a it's it's a four well not even four hours i think the biggest ride you're going to get is three and a half hours it's yeah. um yeah it's three and a half hours with your mates you can talk yeah <laughs> and so, yeah I, I think the more the more you do it the less bored you yeah. become um and yeah I, it, even sometimes if it's just one of the sports a swim a bike or a run during the week if you can have company or friends in any one of those three yeah. it takes a lot of pressure off those um yeah. those longer solo sessions yeah, yeah. um because sometimes it's it's actually really good for you to get out by yourself and be in your own head well i love that for running i've never i yeah. never i've actually never run with anyone to be honest and i don't really uh, track sessions and that sort of thing I think it's a bit different where running with someone would be good yeah. unfortunately I can't really manage it usually but I love getting the headphones in and just doing a long run it's yeah. my favourite session yeah. actually <laughs> and I think if you if you don't get one of those sessions during the week make sure you do get it yeah. that's the other side of the coin yeah. if there's too much um, social and it's all just chatting I'd say um, yeah, remove remove your headphones just be away from technology just you yourself yeah. in your own mind out there enjoying it yeah yep. all right well, that's pretty much the end of the questions is there anything else you wanted to, to add um no just good luck out there on race day um be be patient in the build-up obviously you've got the christmas and new year's break mm. um that's a really good time to be training um obviously be safe there's um yeah a lot of people are in holiday mode end of season the the bike riding out on the road can be a dangerous place um even all the more reason to have a buddy with you out there um but all the best in your preparation i think you're in pretty good hands with Stu. um and we'll look forward to seeing you down there race weekend yeah yeah and um just quickly if people want to uh contact you about individual coaching so something that's not general um i'll it's i4coaching.com.au but I'll put that on the um on the page after this yeah so we're yeah we're based here in Melbourne we've got a a squad in Melbourne but we also do uh online training programs and camps and clinics around Australia and looking to move overseas with some of them so um yeah you'll be able to track us down if you if you want our help all right, well, um, thanks for joining me. Um, it's the first time I've done something like this. I'm uh, yeah, quite excited about it. It's pretty, pretty good fun. Um, look out. What I'm going to be doing is uh, hopefully doing more of these videos. i really like to. I'm seeing what I can arrange at the moment. I'd really love to, ideally, I'd love to have a nutritionist come in and give you some help around what you should be eating in, say, general, general life, general you know, training type nutrition. Yep. But also later on, Um, I'll go through some more specifics about what you can be eating um, or in training but in the lead up to it to the race as well and what you can you know sort of what gels you should be using what how they what should be in those gels that sort of stuff Uh, as I said I hope to line up Mitch Anderson who's um, former pro triathlete as well but and and a doctor and he's got a a bike fitting fit out um, operation at the moment 24 hour world record holder on the bike that's right (laughs) you got across that last early in the year yeah Yeah, that's right Um, uh, so hopefully I'll have him as well Um, and I don't know if we can arrange but maybe we'll see I'll talk to Mitch after but maybe some you know bit of stuff around swim analysis I don't know maybe you can yeah yeah we'll show you what you do yeah Yeah. get you down there and I can have it show you what what, how it works and what sort of you know particularly you have obviously with that you have to have your own analysis done but some of the general stuff you can do you yeah can focus on yeah um i think that's probably about it but um yeah if you've got any um watch out for for more videos coming up and if you've got any questions please just put them in an email or you know, by the comment section on my website and i'll um, endeavor to answer as many of those as i can yeah all right thanks very much well done. goodbye yeah. see you later bye